Aflatoxin is uh, a mycotoxin. It is something that is produced by a mold. You've heard of bacteria. We also have yeasts and molds. This mold, Aspergillus, and I don't want to go into too many scientific things, but it's called Aspergillus flavus. It is a mold that produces a toxin. Okay? The mold in itself is not the problem. But when it produces that toxin, the mold even can die. But the toxin remains in the food. What allows this uh, Aspergillus to grow? The conditions around. They need moisture, they need heat, and the food itself. Okay, so if we dry the grain properly and we keep it in an area free from moisture, the aspergillus will not grow and produce the toxin. But if we keep this grain in a wrong place, the aspergillus grows, it produces the toxin and it stays in the produce. And that's what causes problems. The regulation for aflatoxin is done using compulsory Uganda standards. What it means is that a product covered by a Uganda standard has requirements in there that refer to how much aflatoxin is allowed. So it's not so much aflatoxin on its own. Aflatoxin is just one part of many things that we look at. For example, if you're dealing with maize grain. The maize grain standard indicates a number of parameters that the maize grain product has to meet. One of them includes aflatoxin. So I, we don't have a regulation for aflatoxin. We have compulsory Uganda standards, which cover maize grain, maize flour, millet, uh, sorghum, whichever cereal you want to talk about or its product the requirements that they should meet are clearly indicated in the Uganda standard. With aflatoxin, we have a maximum of 10 milligrams per kilogram, or what we call 10, 10 parts per million, basically 10 milligrams in one kilogram. You should not exceed that as total aflatoxin. We also check a specific aflatoxin, B1, which we have, you know, the scientists have established this is the real cause of the cancer, and that one does not exceed five milligrams per kilogram, okay? So those are the requirements. Uh, generally, the total amount should not exceed 10. If you exceed 10, you're now entering danger zone, and we don't want it to go there. So what is indicated in most of those compulsory standards is the 10 milligrams per kilo. We have what we call the regulations that we implement, the certification regulation, which requires every product that is covered by a compulsory standard to have the Q mark. So it means if you are producing maize grain, which is covered by a compulsory standard, you must get the Q mark, which requires you to go through a certification process, and part of that process includes checking for aflatoxin. We have the surveillance, the market surveillance regulation, which authorizes our team to go out into the market and pick whatever is there to check if it is meeting Uganda standards. If your product does not have the Q mark, they are free to remove it, whether it is good or bad, because it means you have not gone through the process to establish the quality of that product. And of course, the imports inspection regulation, which governs the products coming into Uganda. So those are the regulations and the standards that we use. The list of the grain standards are all available on our website. The Act, the UNBS Act and the regulations I mentioned outline clearly the penalties that are given. Basically, if we find you going against the requirements of those regulations, we are able to prosecute you and you can be fined and even get a jail sentence. Now, 
We have tried very hard to give people the opportunity to do what is right because we have found that many people don't know. They just don't have the information. So what have we done? The most that we have done right now, unless your case is really severe, we do not push all the way to prosecution unless you are a repeat offender, someone who just doesn't care, okay? Most of the people we find, we seize their items and they are given an opportunity to apply for certification. If they don't go through that process, then we take them through prosecution. What's the idea? We are trying to move as many people as possible across the bridge. Can we get as many people to be implementing the standards? So that now when we come out full force, if we find you violating these regulations, we shall proceed. Um, we have obviously through our public relation office, we also have stakeholder engagements that are planned throughout the year. And we, we would love to say we do it as often as possible, but it's very much limited to the resources that we have. Now, of course, currently the maize or the cereal issue is a big deal, and we're using whatever resource we have right now to reach out to people who are trading, who are milling, to give them information about the standards and how best to implement them so that they can trade, okay? Uh, we have partnered with a number of um, uh, our partners who have come to facilitate what we're doing. Most of them, I think, are, and we've done a lot of work with USAID, we've done work with Oxfam, we've done work with PSFU, Private Sector Foundation. So we've had donors as well as private sector come and partner with us so that we go out there and talk to the different people concerned. Right now we are working very much with Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industries and Fisheries because the issues of food safety are embedded in Ministry of Agriculture. They are the competent authority but they have to work with all of us in that value chain to make sure that we deal with all food safety problems. Standards are developed using what we call technical committees. It is not UNBS that has decided what is in a maize standard. It is a technical committee that deals in grain, food grain. And it is composed of the university people, the people who trade in this, who manufacture, the government institutions that are all related to that sector. Basically the experts in grain. They sit in that technical committee and they agree on what that standard is. We take that document, make it a public document, get information from the bigger sector, and then when everything is okay, we take that through to the National Standards Council to become a Uganda standard. So now at the ESC, we replicate that. Everybody in the countries there has those technical committees, so they all talk about maize grain in their countries. Then we take that information to the ESC. Are we in agreement? Is there anything that we differ? If something differs very big, we go back and make sure everyone is in agreement. When everything is back and we are all in agreement that everybody is happy with aflatoxin 10 milligrams per kilogram, okay, then we agree and make the East African standard. Now that standard comes down and we take it through to the National Standards Council and we say East Africa has agreed on this. It becomes the national standard, okay? Right now, and following the issues that were raised, um, the ongoing issues that came up with the, our trading with our partners, neighbors, South Sudan, um, Uganda National Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industries and Fisheries are working together. When it comes to raw grain, as in maize grain, raw products need to have what we call sanitary and phytosanitary permits. Now the competent authority to issue this sanitary and phytosanitary permit, often abbreviated as SPS, is the Ministry of Agriculture. Now that comes together with the certification that we give. The SPS caters for the beginning part. The certification covers the end bit. So when you have both, the food safety chain is closed. 
So we are working together to ensure that any grain that goes out of this country, whether it's to South Sudan, whether it is to Kenya, any of our neighbors, you must have number one, the SPS permit, number two, the Q mark from UNBS. That way your food safety requirements are being catered for and the produce can go out. Now remember, for a product to get a problem outside, it started inside, isn't it? So this is not looking at the safety of outsiders, it is first looking at the safety of Uganda. Because if the product is meeting requirements here in Uganda, by the time it goes outside, it will have no problem.